Hi everybody, I'm Luke Margolis, Corporate Communications Director for Atlantic Health System, and today we want to bring you some of really the latest information, exactly what we know about the Omicron variant of COVID-19. And joining me to discuss this are two folks who are uh, familiar to our audiences, the folks who see some of our content and community conversations. Seated to, to my direct left is Dr. Jason Kessler. He is the Section Chief of Infectious Diseases at Morristown Medical Center, part of Atlantic Health System. And to his left is Dr. Stephen Sherris. He is an Executive Vice President and the Chief Physician Executive at Atlantic Health System, along with being the President of Atlantic Medical Group. And gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, Thank you. So uh, we know that everything related to COVID-19, even going all the way back to last year, has been somewhat of a moving target as you look to try to provide information. So what I want to start first by saying is that we are recording this conversation on Thursday morning. Uh, well, I guess afternoon, if you will, since we are right around the noon hour. Uh, and we're doing that because we're going to try to share with you everything we know about this variant at this time. But by the time you see this, maybe it's the end of the day today or maybe tomorrow, things could potentially have adjusted. So continue to stay tuned to our social media channels, to our YouTube channel, where we're going to try to do conversations like this as regularly as possible to give you the latest information. And we'll certainly try to avoid anything that we don't know for sure or hasn't been fully confirmed. So that all having been said, um, doctors, why don't we start first with just kind of what we know about this, Dr. Sherris? We know, I think it was the first patient in a, in a confirmed patient in America was diagnosed on Wednesday out of San Francisco, correct? correct. And the second one this morning in, uh, I believe, Minnesota. Okay. But it's not unexpected. Yeah, I, I think we all would have assumed, Dr. Kessler, that with the speed with which this virus moves, it's, it's not a shock that it's in the continental United States at all. Correct. I don't think there's any great surprise that we will discover cases here, and uh, we will continue to discover more cases here as time goes on. It's spread uh, th pretty much throughout the world at this point. Uh, so we can expect to see further cases uh, crop up both here and abroad. So let's start first with, with what we know about this so that we can empower people with information that can help them. Dr. Sherris, what are you, uh, are you you're, you're a practicing physician, um, have patients reached out to you? What are you telling friends and family? What, what kind of messages are you sharing right now? Well, my messages really haven't changed over the past few weeks. You know, we're still, highly focused on getting as many people vaccinated as possible. Still about 30% of the people in New Jersey haven't been vaccinated at all. And only about 15% of the vaccinated people have had booster shots. So the, the primary weapon, the primary strategy for tamping down and extinguishing and ending the pandemic is still aggressive vaccination strategy. What do you think, Jason? Oh, I absolutely agree. I think we need to continue to focus our efforts on increasing the rate of vaccinations, both primary vaccination series as well as booster vaccinations across uh, a pediatric cohort, pediatric population, and the adult population. And that's going to be the best way to protect ourselves and yourselves at home uh, from the Omicron variant, uh, the Delta variant, which continues to persist throughout the country, and any other future likely future variants that are on the near term or short term. Could there be future variants as well? Oh, absolutely. I think that uh, this is the natural history of a, a virus or a viral illnesses. Mutations occur all the time, especially in RNA viruses, of which this is one, uh, because the machinery that creates new viruses that's a part of the virus is error prone, meaning it makes mistakes all the time. Mm -hmm. And these mistakes are what leads to these mutations and lead ultimately to new variants. Many times these mutations are of detriment to the virus, but we never hear about those because they no longer propagate or reproduce in the community. But every so often, uh, a mutation actually provides some sort of benefit to the virus, whether it makes it more contagious or potentially makes it more lethal in certain cases, probably not in this case, uh, but these mutations, rare mutations, can occur uh, when a virus is spreading throughout the world, essentially. Um, and so we will see further mutations in the virus, and we may see future variants uh, that uh, elevate our concern uh, to the level that we've uh, had about this one. Uh, Dr. Sherris, we, we've seen ebb and flow throughout the start of the pandemic, even to now with, with waves or, or plateaus, however, whatever sort of visual analogy we want to draw to describe them. Um, but at least in the early going, we saw that masking, hand washing, that stuff really did help break that initial uh, increase we were seeing, that, those, that spike of cases. How 
much do you think we'll need to turn our attention back to those things? Because frankly speaking, I, it, you drive around New Jersey, you can see there's a, not a lot of folks necessarily masking in indoor places the way they did last year. Right, so I think the second part of the conversations that, that we have with patients is, you know, it is only, it's natural being at this for nearly two years now for people to become fatigued with the discipline around hand washing, being aware of your environment, uh, who you're with, their vaccination status, how crowded it is, how big the room is, your need to mask. Um, I think that's just natural. I think as physicians, that's the other part of it along with the vaccination emphasis is the e emphasis on the personal hygiene discipline and environmental discipline, being aware. Um, that's, that's how we will continue to coexist with this as this eventually recedes to an endemic state. It will never go away. There will never be, and I've said this before, there will be a date certain where we could declare victory on this. Right. It's going to take um, this continued uh, focus and discipline, and to the extent that we can exert that consistently, that will hasten the end of the pandemic. But people can live with and in this environment if they just follow those simple rules, I would say. No, I, I agree. Uh, again, we need to both focus our attention on the tools that we know to work, which mm -hmm. are vaccination and the attention to environmental control and uh, personal hygiene yeah. controls. Um, I think, as Dr. Sherris pointed out, they, these and you pointed out, these will come in ebbs and flows. Right. Uh, and there may be times when we need to pay more close attention to those uh, practices than at other times. Uh, and we need to be somewhat flexible uh, mm -hmm. about our approach uh, as we move forward. Yeah, the governmental guidance, I mean, is, is pretty clear and it is pretty structured. Um, things like when to mask, when masking is optional. You know, even in our own medical system, how we adjust visitation That's is right. very structured based upon the prevalence of the virus transmission in the community at the time. So people shouldn't look at this as any kind of um, um, uh, essential erosion of our, of our approach to this. This is how science works. You create structure and based upon what's happening at the time, you adjust your posture. Um, and that's how we've been consistent here in this health system. We've been very structured about it. So what happens now? And just to give folks a sense, you know, we're not necessarily addressing some, some things which you may see bandied about in the media, things around how, what, the, what the variant may do in terms of its relationship with the vaccines, what it may do in terms of, is it a more or aggressive form of illness you may get from this variant? Because frankly speaking, that's all still being looked into, right? What, what, what's going on right now to figure that out? I mean, I think that there's uh, investigation all around the world, in including within the borders of our country, as to what the clinical impact will be uh, for, and the public health impact will be for this particular variant. But as you point out, uh, I think we are right now, uh, without the necessary information to make any firm conclusion as to this particular variant's transmissibility or its contagiousness as compared to previous variants, nor are we able to say with any degree of confidence whether this variant produces more severe illness or uh, less severe illness. Uh, I think what we can say with confidence is that as of right now, we should continue to focus in on the prevention and mitigation strategies that we know uh, have had an impact uh, to, to bring uh, the pandemic at least to heal, if not break it completely, which as, I, as Dr. Sharers points out, I don't think we're we're ever going to have an end of COVID day. We're not going to mission declare accomplished, right. uh, yeah. mission accomplished. This right. will be with us for the foreseeable future, though probably in a much more endemic state uh, where it's not causing thousands of, of people to become hospitalized and die, hopefully. Uh, but it will be with us. Uh, and we need to learn how to live with it and to you know, deploy our mitigation strategies um, uh, well uh, to prevent any uh, significant morbidity and mortality. So, so, Jay, so, Jason, so, you know, what does the end look like, you know, the, in the, in, with the history of coronaviruses as a family? Um, what does endemic look like uh, in your vision? So, I, mean, I think as many people are probably aware, there, ha there are other human coronaviruses that are circulating uh, on an annual basis that we come into contact with, that we live with yeah. before COVID was ever an issue. Uh, these coronaviruses cause what is commonly referred to as the common cold, uh, 
Um, but in certain patients, they could cause much more severe illness. Patients who were at the, you know, the extremes of age or patients who had uh, severe immunocompromising conditions. But by and large, they caused you know, mild upper respiratory mm -hmm. symptoms. And I, I think we may reach a point uh, at some point in the, in the future where this virus looks very similar to those viruses. Mm -hmm. But I believe we'll always be in a situation where people who are highly vulnerable will need to be taking precautions above and beyond what perhaps a young, healthy person might be. Like need. influenza, like we've dealt with influenza. Like influenza, exactly. Okay. All right, folks. Well, like we've said, we're going to continue to, to try to re record these types of messages and share them with you as frequently as the information allows us to so that we're able to share with you some, some news, some, some tips that might help folks make uh, further decisions out there. But I think what our doctors have shared with you is that the guidance that has carried us through to this point in the pandemic remains in place. And so uh, with that having been said, if you're, if you're looking for any further information on this or maybe you wanna go back and see some of the ways we talked about this previously, you can find all the information you want on our website. Go to AtlanticHealth.org uh, and we have a ton of COVID resources on there. Also, by the way, while you're there, if you are not vaccinated, you can make a very quick and easy appointment to do that and we certainly would encourage you to do so. So for Dr. Sherris and Dr. Kessler, I'm Luke Margolis, thanks so much for joining us and we'll catch you next time.